Then he said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's good news, brothers and sisters. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone that seeks the Lord in the name of Jesus. We have a fallacy in our churches and in all in our communities and in our church in the churches in our communities, as well as all over the world, that once you are a servant of the Lord, that everybody's supposed to like you. Every, you, you can be invited over to people's houses and they're gonna like you. Your community is gonna like you. Everybody that knows that you preach the gospel is supposed to really love you. But we know, according to what the scripture is saying, that's a total fallacy. And we're going to look at the scriptures. We're going to find that the majority, if not all the servants of the Lord, were persecuted. They were persecuted by the people around them, even by some of their family members. They didn't like them at all. But we're going to get right into the lesson, and we're going to pick it up in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to see what Jesus had to say about you as far as like if you are a servant of the Lord, if you are a true servant, if you, if you are seeking his face. We're going to see that if you're righteous, you're going to see if everybody, if, if everybody love you, okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 5, and pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The scripture says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs, the kingdom, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you are blessed. Coming from the Lord, you are blessed if you're doing it according to what the scriptures say. But what if, what if you, you, you are out here and you're not preaching the scripture, you're not coming according to what the scripture is saying. You're just saying your own words or whatever. You're not blessed. You're cursed according to what the Lord is saying according to what, what his standards are, but according to what this world is doing, you are blessed. They're going to take care of you, but the Lord don't see it that way. If you're preaching what the Lord says, hey, you, you are blessed because he knows that there's some persecution that's going to go along with it, and you're not going to be liked by everybody. Go ahead. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. When men shall revile you. They don't like you. They hate what you're saying. Go ahead. And persecute you. Uh-huh. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake. So we don't. So according to this, we see a lot of people. And I, if we if we look at this scripture and, a, and, and and compare it to a lot of these preachers that we see around here in this day and age, that everybody likes them. From from the from the preachers on the TV that, that, that uh, with worldwide and re, uh, renown and fame, everybody likes them preachers. They can go on talk shows and all that, smile and cheese because they're rich and they and, and, and every and they have favor from everybody else. All right, they, those people aren't really, according to the, what, what the scripture is saying here, those people aren't preaching the gospel because they are not persecuted. The scripture says in, ver, in verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And we ain't talking about them preachers that, that, that uh, uh, when the government comes up on them, for, uh, for having all this money because they've been stealing all this time. And then they turn around and say, well, I'm being persecuted. No, you getting your just desserts because you're greedy. Because you're greedy. The scripture says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you, shall persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you for my sake. Go ahead. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, uh -huh. for great is your reward in heaven. Uh -huh. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So they persecuted the prophets which were before you. So if you're preaching God's word, truly preaching God's word, there's some persecution that's going to come behind it. We're going to look at some of the attributes of the, the, the true prophets of the Bible, the true servants of the Lord. We're going to look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 20. We're going to see... If Jeremiah was loved by everybody and that he had, you know, and, and they, when, when people saw him coming, that they loved to hear the scriptures and, and what they loved to hear what the Lord had to say uh, uh, from, from, uh, coming from Jeremiah. We're going to see if Jeremiah really enjoyed his job. OK, Jeremiah chapter 20 and pick it up at verse seven. Go ahead. 
O Lord, thou hast deceived me, mm -hmm. and I was deceived. Mm -hmm. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. Mm -hmm. I am in derision daily. Mm -hmm. Everyone mocketh me. That don't sound like Jeremiah enjoyed his job. It don't sound like Jeremiah enjoyed his job. He said, O Lord, I, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocking me. Everybody was making fun of Jeremiah. And what was Jeremiah doing? He was preaching the word of God. He was preaching the word of God. He wasn't doing it like these preachers that you see in these churches nowadays that can smile and laugh and they got all these nice clothes on and all this. He wasn't doing it like that. He wasn't doing it like that. Jeremiah was a servant of the Lord. And he knew, and, and, and he was, he was, uh, uh, he got a rude awakening that when he started preaching the word, he thought people were going to like it. No, they hated it. They hated it. Go ahead. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil mm -hmm. because of the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me mm -hmm. and a derision daily. He said, I cried out violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. They didn't like to hear what I had to say when it came down to concern, when it came down to the Lord and what I'm speaking uh, 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 according to what the Lord had to say, the Lord's word. They didn't like that. But you see some preachers walk around here like, hey, you know, like everything is grand. Everything is wonderful. I got a word from the Lord. Hey, those preachers didn't have, they don't have a word from the Lord because if they did, it would be people mocking them. They would be in derision daily and people would be in some, in some form or fashion looking for them so that they can mock them and do different things to them. Go ahead. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. I'm not going to make mention of him. Go ahead. Nor speak any more in his name. Uh-huh. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Mm -hmm. And I was weary for forbearing, and I could not stay. Now, you have people running around here now saying they, 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 they use this particular scripture like it's like a good saying. It's like his, his, his word is like fire shut up in my bones. His word is like fire shut up in my bones. But the thing is, they need to find out why Jeremiah said that. Jeremiah didn't want to speak the words of the Lord because the words, he, he was getting persecuted for, for that. So Jeremiah wanted to keep his mouth shut, but he couldn't. He couldn't do it. Go ahead. For I heard the defaming of many. Mm -hmm. Fear on every side. They, he, J Jeremiah was scared. Fear on every side. Go ahead. Reports say they. Mm -hmm. And we were reported. Uh -huh. All my familiars. All watched, his family. Go ahead. Watch for my halting, saying, peradventure, he will be enticed, mm -hmm. and we shall prevail against him, mm -hmm. and we shall take our revenge on him. That's how you know that you're preaching the true word of God, according to the scripture, because ain't no, nobody's going to like what you have to say. Nobody's going to like what you have to say. Okay? Let's look at Mark. I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead and read that uh, verse 1. Skip back to verse 1, I'm sorry. Because we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out why it is that Jeremiah uh, uh, felt like this. We're going to figure out, yeah, verse 1. Yeah, we're going to read that verse 1. Pick it up at verse 1, and we're going to read 1 and 2. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm, just, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 1. Because we're going to figure out why Jeremiah felt like this. One of the reasons why he felt like this. Jeremiah wasn't like he was in some cases beaten by, the, by, by these, these religious, leaders, religious leaders of his time. Go ahead. Jeremiah 20 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now Pashur, the son of Emer, the priest, mm -hmm. who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Now this is the chief priest of the house of the Lord. That's, that's him, Jeremiah. Go ahead. Then Pashur smote Jeremiah, the prophet. Oh, he didn't like to hear what Jeremiah had to say, so he smacked Jeremiah. Go ahead. And put him in stocks mm -hmm. that were in the high gate of Benjamin, mm -hmm. which was by the house of the Lord. S Smack Jeremiah and locked him up. He didn't like to hear what Jeremiah had to see, had to say. He didn't like it. But let's skip to uh, Mark. Let's look at Mark. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Because Jesus went around, Jesus went around healing people. He went around healing people, and let's see if they were happy about what he was doing. Mark chapter 3, and pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead. 